All right. Here is my first version of my foam cutter. Now, all I did was just take uh, the pegboard. I went and picked up um, a couple supplies. I was trying to figure out how to do this as easily as possible, but it turned out to be a little bit harder than I thought. But uh, trying to make it simple, but um, this is what I ended up with. All right, so what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a quarter inch aluminum rod. And uh, I just got the stock that was readily available. Now, this is what my bottom looks like. On the bottom of the pegboard. I cut three legs. And this one's gonna have to be offset just because you want your rod to be sticking up out at the top. Okay, so now I have um, an eye bolt and nut. I went ahead and went quarter inch because make things simple, everything quarter inch holes. So I drilled one hole here, quarter inch. I drilled a quarter inch hole here and here. And I bent the rod in here, bent the rod in here. And this is actually really loose. But because of the bend, when you squeeze it together, it actually gets pretty tight. If you squeeze it in too far, the wood actually splits. So I had to actually chop it off and start over. Because <laughs> I had all three wood pieces were the same length, but this works out too. Now, if you take a look at it, the wood in the center is a little bit off center. That's because I wanted to make my cutting rod as straight as possible, all aligning to that little eye, ho eye, eye hook. Okay, so three pieces of wood, pegboard. I went ahead and used number eight screws. And I actually drilled them in right there. So I just drilled on top into the center of the wood, just put a bunch in. Now the holes do work. This one I went through the hole and it's holding fine. I actually didn't think it would um, hold. Um, but I tried it out and it does work. I tried to screw it in as flush as possible. This one went in a little bit deeper. This one, perfect. I don't feel any snags or hesitation. So, bolt all three. Everything should be good. I didn't even solder. All I did was wrap it around, wrap the wire around, and electrical tape that on there. Now, that sets up where everything goes. So, <clears throat> if you notice, right here. So my eye hook ends right here. You see the the screw holes are right here. It's off center, right? So my eye hook comes. You can kind of see the wire is right here. Goes down this hole. Then if you follow this line of holes lines up to the rod. So my rod is exactly straight and coming down. That way when I set up my guide wire you can see the wire right here. I want it to be as straight as possible, so I get the cuts. Now, on the bottom of the eye hook, I set up my wire, and as far as I know, polarity does not matter, so I just took my uh, power supply. Now, power supply, I picked up one of these guys, and the one reason was because I didn't know how long my nichrome wire was going to be, so I ended up being able to adjust. And for my length, I'm running 12 volts. And my nichrome wire. I got this for pretty cheap. 28 gauge. 28 gauge is actually um, nice and thin, so everything comes out very, very um, good. So, all I did was just plug this little guy in. OK. 
Okay, nice little switch on off. And everything cuts pretty good. I was able to cut um, even little slivers like this. Um, as long as you go slow, everything works really good. All right, so what I ended up doing was looping the wire about four or five times and wrapped it around. It didn't really even just tie it. I wanted to make sure I didn't bend the nichrome wire too much because um, if you get a crease in it, it kind of sucks on the cut line. So I went ahead and just looped it around there. Then on top here, so I like this um, aluminum rod all the way across. I know some people will start here and come across out and um, that works too. Um, but I like being able to pull it off easily. So what I did was, all I did was twist it up, make a little eye hoop, and it really holds pretty well on it. Now on the aluminum rod, I put a notch there so it doesn't slip. And uh, all I have to do is Put a little tension on the thing, on the rod, and then loop my eye on here, and that's it. Goes on. Then I can start cutting. So what I end up doing is pilot cut. Then I put the wire in through. Then I clean up my cuts and um, you know I tried doing this with a razor blade and. Uh, you can never hold a razor blade per perfectly perpendicular. That's why on the marked side it's nice and thin, but deep down inside on the back side it's just no way to control it. So um, much better. So I built it. So I think my budget was oh man five dollars for the pegboard, two dollars for the wood. I don't even know how much the the rod was. I think the rod was a couple dollars. Um, and uh, the power supply, the screws, the eye hook, it's gotta be less than like $20, $30. I think the wall adapter is like a couple dollars off of eBay. And uh, the nichrome wire was a couple dollars for a hundred foot. I'm not gonna be able to use all that stuff either. But um, yeah. So I'll try um, posting a couple pictures as soon as I um, get some cuts done or actually a video of me cutting and uh, you can see how it works but that's the piece of wood I originally thought I was gonna use the one by two but that didn't work out I actually used this one just because I thought I'd get a little bit more stability out of it but um it was just random so but the wood the pegboard was oh, was this one that I got for five dollars at Lowe's. Cut it in half, like that. Cut it in half and just went to town on it. And all I did was just, um, oh, I used a razor, cut it, bent it, cleaned up the edge. Everything was good. So I guess we'll end here. This is how I made my little handy dandy foam cutter.